Hi everyone, today we're going to finish recapping the lesson for today. We're going to talk more about rationals and radicals. So we are going to follow up on the packet from classwork. We were up to this part where it said proving rational equations. So in order for us to prove a rational equation, we need to also know how to simplify and combine and add or subtract fractions. So what it says is go to the one side of the equation and just stick with that one side and try to simplify, add or subtract on the one side, manipulating that one side of the equation if you can, and don't cross over the equal sign. That's really important because we're trying to do a proof where we manipulate the one side of the equation to make it match and make it equal to the other side. Eventually we want to show that the one side equals the other side or the one side does not equal the other side. And our last step will be we want to show the one side is equal to the other side or not. So what I recommend you do is draw a line down the equal sign reminding yourselves not to cross over it and then I'm going to work with this side I'm going to get an LCD which is a least common denominator on the right hand side so to do that I'm going to put a 1 over 1 and then I'm going to notice that my denominators are not alike so my LCD that I'm going to get is x cubed plus 8 I want them to both be the same so this one does not have x cubed plus 8 so I'm going to multiply it by x cubed plus 8 over x cubed plus 8 thus getting x cubed plus 8 over x cubed plus 8, which equals 1, plus 1 over x cubed plus 8. Now I have the same denominator, so I'm not going to drop the denominator because it's not an equation, it's something that I'm proving. So again, I'm going to ignore the left-hand side right now. I'm just going to keep the denominator because they're the same, and now I'm going to add across the numerator. So I'm going to get x cubed plus 8 plus 1 which, if you combine like terms, these will equal x cubed plus 9 over x cubed plus 8. Now I notice that if I were to go to the other side and bring it down, these two sides are equivalent. So I have proved that indeed the one side is equal to the other side. So my last statement, my last step should say that the one side equals the other side if it's a proof. It's valid, so they say that the one side equals the other. If it's not valid, I would write the one side does not equal the other side, okay? Now, please keep in mind there, would, there were other ways to do this. In addition to me doing the LCD on this right-hand side here, I could have worked with the left-hand side instead and done division and shown that I would have gotten a remainder of 1. If I had done it that way, I would have worked with the left side and shown that it would have equaled the right-hand side. So there's multiple ways to do this stuff. The next skill I'm going to go over is rational equations. It's just like a rational expression where we're adding or subtracting, but this time we have an equal sign. And because we have an equal sign, we're solving an equation. The goal is to solve for x or whatever variable is in the question, not just x but y. So the first thing we're going to do is determine the LCD, which is the least common denominator, in the same way that we would have done it if it were a, an expression. I'm actually going to do example two first because this is an open-ended question and then I'm going to show you the calculator strategy for number one. So I want to look at all the denominators and basically what you can do is multiply all the denominators together in order to get the total LCD. Um, but if you can, think about what is the least common multiple of two and six. The least common multiple of two and six is six because 2 goes into 6 and 6 goes into 6. So the LCD for all the fractions is going to be the 6 and then also this x plus 3. If you had made your common denominator 6 times 2, which is 12, times x plus 3, that actually would also have worked. It just wouldn't have been the least common denominator, but it would have been a common denominator. So that's why we say, when in doubt, multiply all the denominators together to get your LCD. Now remember, you want to multiply by what's missing. So the LCD that I'm going to use is going to be 6 and x plus 3. This first one is missing the 6. This next one is missing a lot more than 6, so <laughs> let me start with this one. I'm going to do 6 times negative 3, which is negative 18, plus the 2, in order to become 6, it needs a 3, and then it also needs x plus 3. 
So I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by what's missing. So it's going to get 3 times x plus 3. So 1 times 3 times x plus 3. When you multiply that out, you're going to distribute. So we're going to get 3x plus 9 over the same LCD, 6 times x plus 3. I'm going to leave it in factored form, okay? Equals. All right, other side. I want 6 times x plus 3 to be my LCD for both of these. So I'm just going to rewrite them on the bottom. This first fraction here has the 6, but it needs x plus 3. So I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom of that one by x plus 3. And I'm going to have x times x plus 3, which is x squared plus 3x. So notice I'm distributing as I go here. And then the last one, it has a, it has a 2, but it needs to become 6. So we need to multiply that last one by 3, because 2 times 3 is 6 and x plus 3. 3 and x plus 3, okay? Now this would be 3x plus 9 like this other one, but because it's a negative, it's a subtraction sign, we have to be careful to distribute the subtraction time. So it's actually going to be minus 3x plus 9, which when we distribute that, it's going to wind up being negative 3x minus 9, okay? Now, please note, I have all an, I have an equal sign. It's an equation. And because now they all have the same denominators, and I'm going to combine them into one, I'm going to be able to drop the denominators and set the numerators equal to each other. So I'm going to have a resulting equation of negative 18 plus 3x plus 9 on the left equals x squared plus 3x, and now I'm going to distribute that negative that I was referring to, minus 3x minus 9. Now, eventually this is going to become a quadratic equation. I'm going to move everything over to one side of the equation and set it equal to 0. I'm going to choose to set it to the right side because we have positive x squared on this side. The 3x's will cancel out, and I'm going to have x squared minus 9 on the right, and I'm going to have 3x minus 9 on the left here when I combine the like terms of negative 18 and plus 9. Now let's move everything to one side of the equation, setting it equal to 0. So I'm going to end up getting 0 equals x squared minus 3x, and then the negative 9 and the positive 9 are going to cancel out. And I wind up having a GCF here of x. So I'm going to get x times x minus 3 equals 0. And I'm going to tee it off. And I'm going to get x equals 0 and x equals 3. Technically, I would be done, but I have to check and possibly reject. So if you look here at step 5, it says check your solutions. You may have to reject your solution. Those are known as extraneous solutions, which means we want to reject them because they make the denominator undefined. So we don't want the denominator to be undefined. And if, it is, if everything rejected, the answer would be no solution. But if not everything rejects, the answer won't be no solution. So just keep in mind, if everything rejects, you would put no solution or empty set, which means no solution. Now, when we, when we check, we can plug back into the original equation in for x, or we could plug in y1, y2, and look for the intersection. It's up to you what you do. I'm not going to reject 0 or 3 right now because those values are going to not make the denominator undefined. So I know they're not extraneous solutions. Now, to check it, I would go to y equals, and in y1, I could put in the left side of the original equation, which is negative 3 over x plus 3 plus 1 half. And the right-hand side would go in y2. And that would be x over 6 minus 1 half. This question was definitely worth either four or six points on the regions. I forgot which one, but it is worth a lot of points here. So now we do see some intersections here on the right. And I'm going to hit second trace, five, intersection. And I could scroll over to hit enter three times. And it looks like I get, it looks like scientific notation for approximately 0, 1 half. That uh, 1.09e negative 13, that's approximately 0, because that really means 1.09 times 10 to the negative 13 power. So that's about 0. 
And then also we could just look at the table and look at what happens at zero. Do you see that the y values match at one half? And then also if we scroll down to three, do you see that the y values match? So it turns out that zero and three both work and we are not going to reject either one for the solution set. Now, if we are given a multiple choice question like example one, example one is easier to just go right to my calculator strategies. So the calculator strategies are down below here. It says put the one side of the equation in Y1, other side of the equation in Y2, and then same thing, you could either do the intersection or you could plug in the answers if you prefer to plug in. I prefer to just do Y1, Y2. So I'm gonna put this side in Y1, this side in Y2, and I'm gonna look for the points of intersection. I'm gonna stop it here so I can do it. So what you guys could see on my calculator screen is I have in y1, 2 over 3x plus 1, and in y2, I have 1 over x minus 6x over 3x plus 1. Now I'm going to start with zoom 6 and see what I can see. And it does look like we have some intersections going on. So I want to help the choices to help guide me. So I see that I have negative 1 third, and I have 1 half, and I have negative 2. So I'm going to hit second trace, 5. And I'm going to just kind of scroll over to one of these intersections and hit enter three times and see what I got. I got x equals one half. And remember, we're looking for the x values. So I know x equals one half is a solution. So I know it's not choice four and I know it's not choice two. So now I'm just really going to look at negative one third and see if negative one third works as well. So I hit second trace five, scroll to the left until you get toward the negatives and then hit enter three times. And see what happens. And do you see how it says no sign change? So this means that probably negative one third is not an answer. Now, the other thing that we can do is use the value, um, which is the value function, which is second trace number uh, one, which says value. And then you would just type in the value that you're interested in. So I'm going to type in negative one third and hit enter. And do you see how it says y equals empty? And that's because negative one third actually makes this denominator undefined. If you look at the denominator, negative one third makes both of these denominators undefined. It's actually an excluded value. So we're going to reject that one and we're just gonna go with the answer of choice three. Wow, nice calculator strategy. Okay, let's go on to our last skill, which is the radical equation. So similarly, the radical equation has um, two options. We can do these by hand, or we can use the calculator strategy. If we are given a multiple choice question, I prefer you to do the calculator strategy, which again is put the one side in Y1, put the other side in Y2, and go right to the check. The reason why I tell you this is because even if you do do this by hand, eventually you're gonna have to check your solutions and possibly reject them. So I would rather you just go right to the check, either do Y1, Y2, or you could plug in the answers. And if you plug in the answers in for X, you could see if the values match, okay? So I'm gonna show you this first. Go to Y1 and type in the left side of the original equation, which is X. Go to Y2 and type in the original right-hand side of the equation, which is the square root of three X plus 40. And then once you're there, hit zoom six again or graph, and you see that there is only one point of intersection and it is on the right. So right away, you know that the answer has to be choice two. I haven't even done any work, and I know that the answer has to be choice two because choice one has two solutions, choice three has two solutions, and choice four has no solution. Remember the empty set means no solution or no intersection, and it is not that one, okay? So we know that the answer has to be choice two. So let's just show you for real. Press second trace, five, go over to the right till you get close to your point of intersection. And when you're close, hit enter, 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 and you will indeed get x equals eight. Now remember, you can also look on the table at x equals eight, and you see that the y values match up as well. And also, if you did look at the values of five, which is a choice, um, sorry, negative five, negative five, which is choice one, you're gonna see that that one should not match up. So if we had gotten negative five by doing this by hand, the values would not match because one side would say negative five and the other one would say positive five. So I would have rejected that negative five anyway if I had done this by hand.
All right, now let's do example two by hand. This was, I think, worth six points on the last regions. So it is worth a, a lot and it is very doable. You guys can do it, you just have to follow the proper order of operations. So the first step is isolate the radical. That means get the radical by itself. So here's the radical, we wanna get it by itself. This means I wanna move this X over to the other side by subtracting it over, all right? So on the left, we will have the square root of six minus two X, and on the right, I'm gonna distribute as I go. I'm gonna get two X plus 30 minus nine, and then minus this X that I moved to the other side. I'm gonna clean this up a little bit. So I have two X, and then 30 minus nine is 21, and actually I had two X minus one X, see two x minus one x is one x so i'll have x plus 21 on the right hand side and the left hand side will be six minus two x now once that radical is by itself which it is what we're going to do is raise both sides to the inverse power so if it is a square root which in this case it is because there's a little two hiding out in the nook then we are going to square both sides because the opposite of square rooting is squaring. If it had been a cube root, you would cube both sides, etc. Okay? So the square and the square root will cancel each other out, and you're going to wind up getting 6 minus 2x underneath, and then x plus 21 squared. Okay? So now don't forget what we would do next. We're going to square this out using box method. We're going to move everything over to one side, setting it equal to zero and solve. I'm going to pause the video here and I'm going to let you do it. So I want to bring you guys back to this question. I'm hoping that you did the box method and you got x squared plus 42x plus 441 on the right hand side. And when you moved over the 6 and the 2x, you ended up getting this equation, which is a quadratic x squared plus 4x plus 435. Now at this point, you may be like, I don't know what goes into 435. And there's a couple of strategies you can do. One of the strategies that worked for me just now was to go to y1 and y2. So go to y1 and y2, put the original equation in y1 and y2, putting the left-hand side of the original equation in y1, and put the right-hand side in y2. When you do this, when you press zoom 6, you can kind of cheat your way through factoring by seeing if there's a point of intersection. Right now, in this home screen, it does not look like there is a point of intersection, but remember, it only goes up to 10, 10, and negative 10, negative 10. So what I can do now is press zoom out. To press zoom out, I press zoom 3, which is zoom out, 3, enter. And then you guys see that there indeed is a point of intersection in quadrant 3. So I press second trace, 5, and I scroll to the left until I'm kind of close to that point of intersection. And then when I'm there, I hit enter three times. I end up getting negative 15. So now I say, oh, negative 15. That must mean that the answer is x equals negative 15. So what would the factor be that corresponds to the answer of negative 15? And I'm hoping you're going to say it's the opposite sign, x plus 15. So if that's the case, then what is the other number that's going to go in the factor bubble to make 435? So then you go to your home screen and you type in 435 divided by negative um, 15 and you're going to get negative 29, which means that, I'm sorry, uh, you could have done positive 15. You're going to get 29. So that means that this other factor is going to be x plus 29. And that means 29 times 15 is 435. And 29 plus 15 should equal that middle term, which is 44, using that AM method. So the answer to this side would be negative 29, but you guys saw there was only one point of intersection. So that must mean that that 29 is going to be rejected anyway. So the final answer is just x equals negative 15 because there is only one point of intersection. Remember, if you reject a solution, it's called extraneous. And if you reject all the solutions, then the answer would be no solution. But actually, this one was a little misleading because when you were looking on that home screen at zoom six, it looked like there were no points of intersection. But then once you did zoom out, you saw one. So that's why it's kind of tricky because it's hard to factor 435 in your head. All right. Thank you for listening. And I hope that this helped.